In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can set up a place point feature to also be able to annotate its name and its description. So the first thing I want to take a look at here is in our delivered workspace, our feature definitions folder, things might look a little bit different than what you have as we're working on some reorganization or a future release. But in the reality, you're going to be looking at working on the text favorites first. And so um, we have you should have a file with the name text favorites imperial in it. Uh, that's where we want to work at first. But to do that, to, to make our text favorite, I first want to create a, a dummy file. I just called it test.dgn. And in there, we're going to actually set up a point feature with a name and description that we can reference into our favorites to actually then build our favorite. And so let me go back and open that test file. And what I did in this test file was I went to geometry and I went to where we can place a point feature, which is here. And then I had, it doesn't really matter what point feature you place. I know that we deliver a, a stop sign, I think, in the examples workspace. But then just go ahead and place it. But before you place it, go ahead and put a name. And, and typically, I would do like uh, point name. You want this to kind of be generic for what we're setting up here. And then point description. If you want to just do name and description, that's fine too. And then, you know, you're going to pick. Uh, you know, pick your feature definition that you want to, to do that on. I should pick first. It doesn't really matter, though, uh, for what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and place this, and that's it, right? Now, if I hover over this and I go to Quick Properties, you'll see that I have a point name and a description. Now, your, your name would be just point name. I already have a point name in here of one. That's why it shows a, a, a suffix. But you can see my feature name is point name and my description is point description. OK, so that's what kind of what we want for our starting place. Now, since I already did that, I'm going to just delete this one. I don't need it. I was just showing you what I did. OK, now we want to go over to where our text favorites are stored. And so I'm going to jump over to my favorites file, which is now in here. And again, yours is going to have the word text favorites in it if you're looking at the examples favor, uh, DGN libs. So we'll go over to our text favorites file. and We want to build that text favorite. So the first thing I have to do is I have to reference in that test drawing. I'm going to reference in the test drawing. We'll do a fit view here. And there's my, my point feature. OK. Now we want to go to the um, basically to the place text command. And the first thing you want to do is you want to pick a text style to use. And so, um, for example, I'm going to go up here and pick um, engineering vertical left center for my text style. So that sets my justifications, my fonts, etc. And I'm going to, if you want to put in a prefix, you can put in a prefix here. Else you can just go to insert field, select element properties, and pick that point feature. And that's going to pull up a pick list. And you just go down to find the feature name category. And so I'm, I'm basically going to set up a text favorite that labels the name and the description. So that's the point name. And then I press Enter. And I go do the same command again, Element Properties. I pick it. And then I'm going to go down to Description and select OK. Now that I have those two calculated fields in place, I want to highlight those, right click, and select to save my text favorite, and then just do another left click to accept. It's going to use the first few letters. And so now that that's done, go ahead and close the text editor. And then we want to actually go to, I believe it is right here, uh, the text favorite manager. This is in uh, 2020 R2 release. Go to the text favorites manager. And you'll see one in here with that those first few letters like PNT, name. OK, so here's mine. Well, at this point, what I would do is I would right click and I would rename that to what I wanted. And I've already done that here. You can see I've got point name and description. So I'm the one I just did. I'm going to delete it. And you'll see that I have that same entry here. So I've called my text favorite point name and description. So that's done. 
Now we can go ahead and detach our reference file. So let's detach that. We're done with that. And our text favorite is complete. Now we need to go over to where we store our annotations. And so in, in my workspace here, I'm storing my annotations, levels, and element templates here in this file. So I'm going to select that file, open that up. Now the first thing I want to do is establish an element template to control the symbology I'm going to place this text on. So I'm going to go into, uh, I have an annotation sheets plan, and I have made a, an element template called plan elements or plan labels, and I've assigned that an appropriate level. So that's step one. Then we want to go over to explore, and we're going to build an annotation group. So I'm going to navigate down to my annotation groups, and it's going to be a plan point entry. And I, I've made one here already, so we'll just kind of review it. But you basically, you want to make a folder here. I made a folder called common because it can be used for site, road, or rail. And then I'm going to make a new entry. And if I go to my entry, we can take a look at what I set up here. So the first thing I did was is I added a new horizontal point annotation. And I just called it point name and description. I want to place text. And then I go select the element template that I just created, so which is the plan labels. I don't have a leader. And on the placement, I said I wanted to place it at an angle of zero. And if I do a fit view here, you kind of see the point. So I've done a little bit of a vertical and a horizontal offset from the point where I'm at the upper left justification. I don't have a cell. And then I have to pick my text favorite, which was point name and description. Um, but when I did pick it, I took the file name out of the beginning. Whoops, let me go back and pick the proper one there. So we'll navigate down, and I'll grab that one. And I want to take the file name out and the forward slash. So it's just the favorite name. And then I've also told it to view independent as true. So that way, when you rotate view, uh, the label remains horizontal in its orientation. So let's go ahead then and close that. We have that the way we want it. And then the last thing we have to do is under our feature symbologies for that point feature that we're going to label, let me go ahead and navigate down. I've got some existing monuments here um, for a half section corner. And so, for example, if I wanted to set that one up, I can come in and go to uh, Properties. And where it says the annotation group, I just need to pick that annotation group. And so I'll go down to my point name and description, and that's it. So now let's go ahead and test that. So we'll go back to our test file here. And this time I'm going to go ahead to my geometry, place my point feature definition, and I'm going to go ahead and select that half section corner. And we'll just go ahead and place it again, even though I have it in here once already, we'll place it again. And then when we go to label it, we can just say drawing production. And I can say annotate the element, or I can annotate the whole model all at once, do a reset. And there we have our name and our description. Now, I didn't change the name and the description, uh, but you get the idea here. I can come up to this one. And I can annotate this one and label that. And you see where I had changed that to point name and point description. It picked up that name and that description. So it really just depends on what you have in that name and that description field. Obviously, that's what's going to dictate the content of your label. So that's how you set up automatic annotation. And that is going to be annotation aware. As you can see, as I change those sizes, it gets bigger and smaller. Hopefully, this helps and will enable you to learn how to set up an annotation for a geometric point feature.